Please be seated, Mr. Governor. Okay, well, thank you. I want to say good afternoon to the honorable members of the General Assembly, friends all, Speaker Madigan and President Cullerton, Minority Leader Cross and Minority Leader Redonio, to Secretary of State White, to Comptroller Hines, to Treasurer Giannullius. I also want to acknowledge uh, Attorney General Lisa Madigan, who is under the weather today, unable to join us, but her mother surely is here, and we thank her for being here. Last March, in my budget address, I stood here at this podium and told you that I'm an optimist. I have complete faith in the people of Illinois and in our ability to meet any challenge. And I'm still an optimist, but I'm also a realist. And today I'm here to talk about real numbers and the real challenges that we face in the coming fiscal year. As you know, our state government is in financial crisis, and we must take action to solve our fiscal problems now, or we will pay a price for years to come. We cannot afford to duck our responsibilities, and I'm not going to try to sugarcoat the situation. The problems that we face today are daunting, and we are in a battle that we must win. We're fighting for Illinois, our state. And I believe that we can win this fight together, but only if we work together to create jobs, to cut costs, and to move forward. We are in a crisis of epic proportions. Even as this great recession is coming to an end, unemployment is still way too high. And for many Illinoisans, their wages and benefits have tumbled. Millions of men and women across our state lie awake at night wondering how they'll pay their bills and how to get back on their feet. And this is a human tragedy. It's also a fiscal disaster for the state of Illinois. When wages fall, state revenues fall too. When people lose their jobs or have to take wage cuts, that sends income tax revenues plummeting. And those who have held on to their jobs think twice before they spend. That means our sales tax revenues are way down. So due to this recession, there's been a historic drop in state revenues, amounting to billions and billions of dollars. And we don't expect our state revenues to rebound in the coming fiscal year. We're also facing the reality that our support from the federal stimulus program is coming to an end. The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act has provided billions of dollars to help us preserve our education system and our health care obligations. But those federal stimulus dollars will not be available for education in the coming fiscal year. In addition, we face a long-standing fundamental problem. The state of Illinois has been spending more than it receives for decades under both Republican and Democratic administrations. As a result, our state has a structural deficit that has been silently ballooning, and today we face a deficit of $13 billion for the coming fiscal year. We have five basic economic strategies to attack this fiscal crisis. We have to cut spending. We have to use strategic borrowing. We have to maximize the federal funds that we can get from Washington. We must create new jobs that will put our people back to work. And we have to improve our state revenues. And this is not going to be easy for anybody. And although the upcoming budget for the state of Illinois is more than $55 billion, about half of that money comes from federal dollars and from special funds. That means that we don't have the authority to decide how most of those dollars are spent. Our spending power is pretty much limited to the dollars in our general revenue fund. And that's about $27 billion in the coming year. Now, there's some people 
who say that we should just cut across the board until we close our $13 billion deficit and our spending equals our revenues. Even if that means draconian cuts in health and human services and education and public safety. But that approach is both heartless and naive. Taking a chainsaw to our state budget for schools and for health care, for human services, for public safety is just plain wrong. It hurts innocent people, millions of innocent people. But does that mean that we can't make any meaningful cuts in our state spending? No. It means that we must consider, however, the financial impact as well as the human cost on every cut we make. In the coming fiscal year, I've made substantial cuts in a number of very important programs. And to make sure that we are squeezing the best value possible out of every single tax dollar, my budget calls for a number of strong belt tightening measures. Many of those ideas were taken from suggestions posted on our budget website, budget.illinois.gov. A few weeks ago, we asked for ideas from the public. We received an overwhelming response, more than 13,000 suggestions on how to address the state's budget crisis. We heard from Kevin in Jerseyville, who told us to cut back even further on travel expenses for state employees. We heard from Raul in Chicago, who told us to take a second look at the cost of big state contracts. We heard from Tom in Naperville, who told us to enact meaningful public pension reform. Those comments, and thousands more like them, help to shape every part of this budget that I'm presenting today. And we will continue to use the tools of electronic democracy to bring in new and creative ideas from the public, from the taxpayers. So I thank the people of Illinois for their good ideas and their good sense. Following the advice of thousands of Illinoisans, the cuts I am proposing today include $214 million in spending reductions for state operations. We can also save another $300 million in the coming year and billions more in the years to come by stabilizing our public pension systems. My budget also calls for a $300 million reduction in the amount of income tax the state shares with local governments. And finally, the most painful cut of all, we must reduce spending on elementary, secondary, and higher education by $1.3 billion. That represents a 17% cut in state funding to grammar schools and high schools across our state. And I'm making this cut with the greatest of reluctance and only because our current fiscal emergency leaves me no choice. These cuts are unavoidable, they're the consequence of a bipartisan refusal year after year to confront fiscal reality. But even with all these difficult cuts, we can't make our ends meet in the coming fiscal year without further action. We also need to make wise use of our borrowing power until our economy recovers and our state revenues improve. Again, I know that there are critics who say the state of Illinois should not borrow any more money. But when we fail to pay our bills, we are basically borrowing money from public schools and from colleges, from social service agencies, from small businesses and other community partners throughout our state. And under the law, we're required to pay 12% annual interest on many of those late payments. Paying our bills late is not right and it's not smart. So instead of forcing our vendors to float us alone, the state of Illinois needs to borrow money strategically at reasonable market interest rates. That way the state saves millions of dollars in reduced interest payments and our vendors won't have to figure out how to make their payroll while they're waiting month after month for payments from the state of Illinois. 
Another key to our budget proposal is to continue to try and bring more federal dollars back to Illinois. And over the past year, we've done an excellent job at winning federal dollars in competition and putting thousands of people in Illinois back to work. We're going to keep working in partnership with President Obama and our congressional delegation to make sure Illinois gets its fair share of the dollars that we send to Washington. But we need to do even more to turn our economy around and to build a long-term solution to our state's chronic fiscal problems. Our top priority in the coming year must be creating jobs for the people of Illinois. The best way to fight poverty, the best way to fight crime, the best way to keep families together is a good job. More jobs means more tax revenue and less spending on unemployment and Medicaid and other social programs. We want to make sure there's a job for every living and breathing person in Illinois who wants to work. That's why I'm committed to Illinois Jobs Now. It's our state's first comprehensive public works program in more than a decade. By combining state and federal resources, we are creating and supporting more than 400,000 new jobs all across Illinois. We're repairing our roads. We're making our bridges safe. We're improving our water systems. We're modernizing our rail systems. And we're building 21st century schools. Over the past year, we've had some real successes in working with Illinois businesses to create and preserve jobs. This year, Illinois was the winner when Ford Motor Company, one of the largest companies on planet Earth, was looking for a place to produce their new Explorer SUV, they picked Illinois. We beat every other state in the, in the Union, every state in the nation, and every province in Canada. And as a result, Ford is investing hundreds of millions of dollars in its Illinois assembly plant and creating 1,200 new manufacturing jobs to build a new fuel-efficient Ford Explorer right here in Illinois. That's good. <laughs> we want Illinois to be Ford country, and we want Illinois to be Fiat Chrysler country, country, and we want Illinois to be Mitsubishi country, our three auto manufacturers. Same way, we took action near Peoria when Keystone Steel and Wire in Bartonville uh, was in jeopardy. We saved hundreds of jobs and helped a company that was founded in 1889 keep its doors open. And by developing a package that combined a targeted investment of state dollars with $91 million in private funds, we made it possible for UPS to improve and modernize major facilities in the state of Illinois. And we saved at least 3,000 jobs in our state. We can do even more to support Illinois businesses and create jobs. Today I'm proposing the Illinois Small Business Job Creation Tax Credit. It will provide a $2,500 tax credit for each full-time job a small business creates in Illinois over the next year. This credit will be limited to businesses with 50 or fewer employees. Those small businesses are the backbone of our state's economy. And they're the key to our economic recovery. We need, need to make sure that they have the resources they need to grow and prosper. Small business means big business in Illinois. The Illinois Small Business Job Creation Tax Credit will help create 20,000 new jobs. And as we're creating those jobs, we must make sure that everyone gets a fair share of the benefits of economic recovery. So I pledge to the working men and women of Illinois that as we rebuild our state's economy, we will defend the minimum wage. We will make sure that everyone receives equal pay for equal work. And we will never, ever... <laughs> and we will never, ever 
allow workplace discrimination against good, hardworking men and women in the land of Lincoln to ever take place. It's very important. Now finally, I have one proposal that I haven't included in our formal budget documents. And I know that it's conventional wisdom. It says that it's impossible to pass new revenue in an election year. But I also know that the people of Illinois share my conviction that education represents the best possible investment we can ever make. Education is the key to economic empowerment. And here are the plain facts, unvarnished. In the current fiscal year, the one we're in, the federal stimulus program provided $1 billion in emergency funding for education in Illinois right now. Those federal dollars made it possible for us to protect our education system from severe cuts in the current budget. But those federal stimulus dollars for education will end on July 1st, 2010, this year. And right now, we don't have the revenues to replace those federal dollars. Now, I think it's wrong, I think it's short-sighted to cut education funding. I do not believe the people of Illinois want our young children crammed into overcrowded classrooms. And I do not believe that the people of Illinois want to see promising young students forced out of college. And I do not believe that the people of Illinois want us to balance our budget today by sacrificing the future of a generation of children. So I'm challenging you, all of you, today, to consider a wise and responsible alternative to damaging cuts in education funding. My alternative is a 1% income tax surcharge for education. That 1% will be enough to restore our education budget to current levels and allow us to get caught up on some of the millions of dollars we owe to our public schools, to our community colleges, to our four-year universities. I believe this 1% for education makes sense. And I think the people of Illinois will understand. We must invest in the future, even in tough economic times. This is urgent. We don't have six months. We don't have six weeks. I challenge the General Assembly to take immediate action to enact the 1% for Education initiative. If we can enact this emergency rescue plan promptly, we can keep 17,000 committed teachers from getting layoff notices in the next few weeks. In every community in Illinois, there are parents sitting up late at night at their kitchen tables trying to figure out how to get through these tough times without sacrificing their kids' education, their children's future. We can't walk away from teaching our kids. Good parents don't take a holiday from taking care of their children. In America and in Illinois, we adults sacrifice some of our present in order to help our children's future. We are custodians of their future. And it might seem easy to close our eyes, cross our fingers, and kick the can down the road. We can't do that. The cost of doing nothing is too great. Now, I've made some difficult and painful choices in this budget. And you must make tough choices as well either by approving a plan for new revenue for education or by passing a budget that will starve public education at every level in every community in the state of Illinois and force property taxes even higher. We have a tough fight ahead of us, but I believe we can get through this difficult year together. We cannot lose faith in the future of our state. The people of Illinois have been through tough times before, and we are strong, we are faithful, and we can meet every challenge that comes our way. So let's work together and pass a budget that will get us through this fiscal year. We can create new opportunities to improve our economy, increase our prosperity, and get our fiscal house in order. 
We must never give up. We will prevail. Today, in every corner of Illinois, families are facing tough times and tough decisions. They are not giving up. They are fighting with their heart and soul. They're fighting for the future of their children. We don't have time for any more partisan battles or tactical politics. So as we tackle this budget, let's remember, we are fighting for our children, we're fighting for our jobs, and we're fighting for the future of our state. We're fighting for Illinois, and together we can win and make the will of the people the law of the land. Thank you very much.